Okay. All good. Okay, it's 631, so let me call this uh, regular meeting of the City Council and WPCA to order. For the record, today is Tuesday, September 5th, 2023. Uh, we have council members uh, participating in person at the City Hall Auditorium and via Zoom. Uh, for the record, uh, we have Councilman Waldron, Councilman Manichia, and Councilwoman Rouet in person. And we have Councilman uh, David Oliver uh, participating via Zoom. Before we begin the agenda, could we kindly stand and pledge the flag? The flag. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Also, before we go into the agenda, um, I would like to just ask for a moment of silence, uh, a couple of moments of silence, um, in recognition first of former Mary, uh, Mayor Mary Jane Grenick. If we could have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Um, and our second uh, moment of silence that I'd like to um, uh, request is in recognition of the passing of former Councilwoman uh, Marie Soliani. Thank you all for your indulgence. Um, all right, we will open the evening's agenda. Uh, first with the public comment, do I have a motion to open the meeting to the public in accordance with section four, subsection E of the city council and WPCA meeting rules of procedure? So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. And second by <clears throat> Councilman Manichia. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are open to the public. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address the board this evening? If you, this podium has live mics, if you would, yes, please. Um, name and address, if you would. Um, and just for the record, we have a 10 minute uh, limit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I heard it was five, so I prepared a four Is and it half. five? I don't, is it five or 10? <laughs> it is 10. Thank oh, you, okay. 10. Uh, my name is George Chapin. I live in Torrington at 186 Bradford Road. Uh, neighbors with Judy Labreck, and we've been after trying to get our street light replaced. So I, we prepared a, our uh, questions and uh, for the board and they, they don't have to be answered tonight. We'd look for an answer on two or three questions by the next meeting if possible. So yes, with public comment, that's what usually happens. The public makes comment, there's no dialogue. Okay. 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 Okay, um, I have a short read here, that's okay. Otherwise I'd try to go from memory and I wouldn't get it right. Um, the lot at the address above, which is Judy's, at, Judy's address at 174 Bradford Road, there's a there's a, a a street lamp that fell over in a storm in 2022. It's poll number H3884. Uh, our the rest of our utilities are underground, so the only thing above ground is our street lighting, and um, we understand that the uh, the street lights are owned by the city and they're replaced at the discretion of the city. But we have some neighbors that are in and around this light that don't like the darkness and would like to see it replaced. Um, so our, our, our cause is uh, after several months of not seeing the light replaced with an orange highway cone in its place, uh, we asked other neighbors about it and began to inquire to learn that uh, it wasn't, there was no intention of replacing it after speaking with Public Works Department, Ray Drew, and I believe the mayor uh, directly. Um, so we didn't like that answer. So we escalated it to this point. Um, we disagree with the response uh, that we were given. Uh, Ray said the streetlights exist for the primary purpose of vehicle traffic and that uh, they're typically only replaced on a, uh, a curve or an intersection, not a, a straight section of the road. 
and this particular section is a, a straight section. So um, that was the first we heard of it. And so we went into a ton of research. I have handouts I can leave with you guys if you want to see it um, after my uh, little speech here. Um, for the sake of one light, uh, all other utilities are underground. We couldn't understand why this was happening. We feel the relatively low cost of the pole and replacement with an LED fixture could easily, easily be absorbed by the municipal budget. Feeling at an impasse, we make this appeal for light replacement to the city council for consideration. We would like to receive a written response at, at the next meeting if possible to uh, two or three questions that, on our case. Uh, one is when we researched the lights in town, uh, when they were purchased Around the year 2000, 2001, there was approximately, according to newspaper articles, a little over 4,000 lights uh, in the city. Um, today, as of October 2022, there's 3,741. So the net has been a reduction. There's probably been some ads, but more uh, negatives in the way of removing lights. And uh, there was a little controversy uh, back in 2015, 2016, according to what we found, where there was a a proposed plan to re proactively remove approximately 2,100 lights, about half of them in the city uh, population didn't like that idea. And so it was back under consideration, back under review. So now that there's fewer and fewer lights, our question is, has the city been quietly been removing them? Or, or is there another program out there that we're not aware of? of uh, there's really no standards about like federal standards about where lights white lights are placed, other than the dark sky initiative and a few other uh, policies like that. So we're curious as to where are the lights going? Moving, if people coming into the city, be aware it's getting darker by the by the week. So uh, we're concerned about that. So that's question one, and I'll, I'll you'll see it in the handouts. Um, the other one uh, question was around the corner on Oxbow Drive, it's a similar development, same thing, underground utilities. And last week there was a light pole replaced on the straightaway. Don't know why we we have photographs of the uh, the Turi uh, Masterson crew replacing the, the the light pole and said, "How come you're replacing this one? We've been waiting since last December." So we don't know where where the decisions are being made and and why one light versus another in a similar situation. So it's a little inequity there. We'd like to find out why. That's our second question. And lastly, um, is a little bit of a legal concern. Um, the deed. For our properties uh, on our lots, it was originally a Temkin development back in 1971, and we found the original deeds and covenants. <clears throat> and most of uh, the deeds and covenants, uh, when when you own a piece of property, are things that you can't do. You can't have livestock. You can't have other people living in a shed in the back, and you can't uh, encroach the uh, the right of way for the access to the utilities in the front. Those kinds of things. So, 90% of them are things that we must comply with as a property owner. There are a couple that are um, place the burden of responsibility uh, on on uh, someone else, and I'll just read an excerpt of what the uh, the clause says, and it'll be in this package I hand you. Is um, the easement area of each lot and all improvements in it shall be maintained continuously by the owner of the lot, except for those improvements for which a public authority or utility com utility company is responsible. Well. We feel that the lights, public public property, and it should be replaced. So that's our our legal cause there, and that's it for my argument. I like to hand these out if you. Sure, okay. thank you very much. Still open to the public. Additional public comments. Yeah, um, that's fine. He's here. Yeah. Yeah, make sure that the um, city clerk gets one for uh, the public record. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I see. Thank you. Um, and just for the record, I'm sorry, it's 640. And I noticed that Councilwoman um, Hona has logged on as well. So um, members of the public, you wish to address the board, please. We made it a longer walk for you. Sorry, Mr. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> Tom Kendeffer, 1821 Winston Road. I'd like to just uh, make some comments about uh, uh, my pleasure with the uh, design of the uh, 
the uh, Riverview parking lot, which is the, also called the library parking lot, but it'll uh, now being called the Riverview parking lot. The, uh, uh, I, I like it because it's adding, it's adding a, a bit more uh, green space. There's accessible features. There's uh, uh, Mr. Sikorsky's providing some uh, EV charging. And, and I noticed, uh, I don't know if you can charge bicycles. I noticed that there's a, a few more uh, uh, electric bicycles that are going around town. So uh, uh, there's going to be a need for uh, more uh, biking space. There's going to be uh, five, another 500 feet of uh, uh, greenway. Uh, of course, there's going to be some trade-offs because you can't fit uh, everything in. You know, something. You know, there's going to be some uh, uh, things that have to. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, be uh, suffered like the taking down of the uh, uh, maybe seventeen or so trees that are that are in there. But I like to say this about urban trees: they're uh, they're they're kind of put in a uh, harsh environment, and they have a limited uh, lifespan, which may only be like uh, really twenty five, thirty years, compared to when they're off in the forest where they can live. 100 years or more so uh uh you know there's there's that uh trade off that has to be made but in this case of the river view there's going to be an additional substantially more things besides uh trees uh uh there's going to be uh uh instead of the just the regular uh, lawn grass there's going to be ornamental grasses somewhat like uh, uh i'm i'm thinking like like we have in the, the, the franklin plaza and patterson park those types of and then shrubbery uh, pollinator uh, plants, so uh, it, it, it'll be it'll be uh, uh, a, a vast a vast in, improvement. Now there's also going to be a trade off, and there's going to be uh, less uh, uh, parking spaces, uh, you know, to fit all this in there. But I think we're we're moving forward with uh, the the whole idea of this complete streets program. And we're, we're we're keeping in line with uh, the way the Department of Transportation is going. That they're now going to be a, a a bigger emphasis on on these this complete streets for any project that uh, the the state does, as well as any project that the state administers through a grant. So I think overall, uh, I think it's going to be a great thing, and I think it's going to be a uh, one of these. Uh, uh, an excellent example of how to use this money for uh, this um, uh, community connectivity uh, project. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kendeffer. We are still open to the public. If there's anyone else from the public wishing to address the board at this time. Seeing and hearing none, we'll move into item number two. I will entertain a motion to accept the regular meeting minutes from August 21st, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. And second by Councilman Manichia. Are there questions or comments on the minutes? Yeah. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Item three, I'll entertain a motion to appoint James Potter and Alexa Keener as alternate members of the Board of Ethics with a term set to expire on August 31st, 2026. I'll move it. Second. Ruet. Second by Councilwoman Hona. Uh, questions or comments um, on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item four, I'll entertain a motion to uh, actually, it doesn't require a motion. This is just a presentation, uh, but for purposes of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to um, open the floor for discussion on the local emergency medical service plan uh, being presented by Chief Borden and Deputy Chief Tripp. Do I have that motion? So moved. So, Thank you, Councilwoman second. Hone, and second by Councilman Minichia. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. <clears throat> the floor is yours.
So this emergency plan is um, for every five years of service for the city of Torrington. Fire department that's delivering supplemental uh, EMS, we have a little bit of an interest in this. Most recently, I think you remember um, earlier this year, we entered into an MOU with Trinity to increase their presence with an mm -hmm. additional ambulance for peak uh, staffing times. And what this uh, agreement basically does is acknowledges that MOU's existence and um, all the players that are involved within the EMS system for the city of Torrington. Outlines our mission and then we statement of purpose, whose authority it falls under, and then uh, give a brief history of um, Torrington's uh, EMS program, starting back to when Campion used to deliver and then Trinity buying out Campion and then the fire department starting with the supplemental uh, presence. So it talks about response areas for what we're, um, what areas we're responsible for, which hospitals we'll transport to, Trinity transporting to, um, who has oversight and medical control that comes from Charlotte Hungerford Hospital. And then there's um, some standards that we use to um, deliver service. Part of it is inventory apparatus that um, things will go on. So for the fire department, it has to, it spells out what we will carry on the apparatus. For the ambulance, it spells out for what they'll have for basic stuff. And a lot of this stuff is dictated by the Office of uh, Emergency Medical Services for the state of Connecticut. Um, but it's outlined here in our plan. And then uh, shows how calls come into the PSAP center, which is LCD, on how they go through um, dispatching the proper units for each uh, medical call. And they do what's called an EMD, and basically all the questions that they ask breaks down and, and gives the closest and most qualified uh, piece of apparatus and or um, ambulance. Outlines the paramedic services, what they'll uh, provide for us for the city. Um, and then in the event that they're not able to, uh, what the mutual aid agreement is for them. And then just some statistical data we show from 2019 to 2022, the reason those dates are picked is 2018 was when the original plan was developed. So moving forward, these are more current numbers to show us where we are today. And then there's quality management. So um, we meet as a committee um, four times a year to go over any issues that are going on within the EMS program for the city of Torrington. And when I say we, that's the mayor, uh, fire department representatives, representatives from Trinity, representatives from Charlotte Hungerford, and representatives from LCD. And the rest of it is just, like I said, it's all statistical things and charts that we can use to keep track of things. So I'll entertain any questions if anyone has any. Um, questions for uh, the chief or deputy chief? Councilwoman Rowett. Response times mm -hmm. that you um, have noted from 2019 to 2022. Is that the time that it actually goes in for the 911 or when the you know, when the dispatch actually then sends it to um, Trinity or? That's the time from the actual call coming in, uh, going through the PSAP, being brought over to dispatch and resources sent into their arrival on scene. That's an average time. Um, different parts of the city are gonna be a little bit different. I mean, you go up to uh, top of East Main Street for the fire department to get there from where we are. It's about a 12, 12 and a half minute response time. Well, that was my East question Main. because I, you know, I've heard that it's a little bit longer on the east side. Yeah. And, um, there, there, times are averaged, but also uh, factored into that is Trinity's location. So if they have a unit that might be up in proximity somewhere on the east side, they may get there quicker. So that's going to skew the actual time for the, either the fire department or Trinity at that time. So what's the longest time that, you know, the response that you've had, you know, based? Top of my head, I'm not sure. 12 minutes, 13 minutes. I would say, you know, all things being equal, that'd be about right. Okay. And that's coming from headquarters up the top of East Main. But if you, you know, you get out further out towards like Cedar Lane or something like that, obviously that's a, a really long ride to get anywhere. Other questions, the chief? Early night for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you get to do this again tomorrow, though, for yes. the Board of Safety. So um, I know we have a Board of Safety member in the back there. So I'm Thank sure you. there'll be more questions at that board. All right. Let's move into item number five. I will entertain a motion to authorize the mayor to act on behalf of the city to award, execute, and administer the purchase of a 2023 Ford Explorer 
XLT or equivalent from Litchfield Ford of Litchfield, Connecticut in the amount of $44,285 pending board of safety approval. This will be funded from the vehicle replacement account and is further explained in the purchasing agent's letter dated August 30th, 2023. I'll move it. Thank you, Councilwoman Rowett. Second. And second by Councilman Waldron. The floor is open for questions. I see Emil is here. Um, just a quick question. What is what is going to be the main purpose of this vehicle? Just curious. Fire Chief's vehicle. Thank you. Other questions? All right, hearing none, I'll call it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Item six, I'll entertain a motion to authorize a mayor to act on behalf of the city to award, execute, and administer the purchase of three snow plows. Uh, this will be acquired from Viking Sives of Waterbury and the total amount of $27,550. This will be funded from the vehicle replacement account and is further explained in the purchasing agent's letter dated August 30th, 2023. I'll move it. Thank you, Councilwoman Rowett. Second. And second by Councilwoman Hona. Are there questions um, on this motion or this purchase? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item seven, I'll entertain a motion to authorize a mayor to act on behalf of the city to award, execute, and administer the purchase of the of the 18 XP brush wood chipper to Bobcat of East Hartford, Connecticut in the amount of $89,802.50. This will be funded from the vehicle replacement account and is further explained in the purchasing agent's letter dated August 30th, 2023. I'll move it. Thank you, Councilwoman Rowett. Second. Second by Councilman Waldron. Questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item eight, I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the public works director and purchasing agent to utilize the attached national, regional, state, and local competitive bids for the procurement of goods and services as further explained in public works director's memo dated August 28, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. And second by Councilman Meneccia. Uh, floor is open for questions. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item nine, I'll entertain a motion to authorize the mayor to act on behalf of the city to award, execute, and administer the contract agreement and all construction change orders for the surface treatments of various roads, micro, surface, and seal coating ink, DBA, Indus of Brain Tree Mass. This project will be funded from the Public Works Road and Drainage Fund and is further explained in city engineer's memo dated September 5th, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Second by Councilman Meneccia. Questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, I'll entertain a motion to authorize the mayor to act on behalf of the city to award, execute, and administer the contract agreement and all construction change orders for the surface treatments of various roads, crack sealing, to seal coat ink, DBA, Indus of Brain Tree Mass. Uh, this project also to be funded from Public Works Road and Drainage Fund and is further explained by the city engineer's memo dated September 5th, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. And second by Councilwoman Hona. Are there questions on this motion? I actually do have a couple of questions. I don't know if sure. And uh, Paul is here, so if you want to go ahead and ask, sure. I just wanted to make sure I understood um, and and what Mr. Kendeffer had brought up in the public comment about the trees being taken out. Is there um, are we taking them out just for space? I know it's not. This is about awarding the actual contract, so I I know it's kind of a secondary question. But while I have you, what is the purpose of pulling those? trees out so the motion is for a crack sealing contract yeah oh, I'm I sorry. Sorry. one motion ahead. i am one ahead i thought we already did that one i apologize we'll <laughs> that's all right come back <laughs> okay all right 
Um, other questions on the correct ceiling oh. contract? Carrying none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank okay, you. let's go to the um, Riverview parking lot. So I would entertain a motion to authorize the mayor to act on behalf of the city to award, execute, administer the contract agreement and all construction change orders for the Riverview parking lot, formerly known as or commonly known as the library parking lot. Uh, this is an improvement project that will be awarded to Yield Industries LLC of Torrington in the amount of one million two hundred eighty four thousand one hundred forty seven dollars and fifty cents, allowing for one hundred and twenty eight thousand four hundred dollars. Uh, for contingencies. The project is funded from the Pavement Management Program Bond Fund and the State of Connecticut Department of Transportation Community Connectivity Grant Program and is further explained in City Engineer's Memo dated September 5th, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Minichia. Second. Uh, second by Councilwoman Rowett. And now the floor is open for Councilwoman. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Pona's <laughs> question. Sorry. So for so, the trees. Yes. So part of the design includes a 10 foot wide uh, uh, multi-use trail along the river. And in order to build that trail, we had to push all the parking stalls over. And as a result, the trees that were the existing trees now, the park, there's a green space there. That width gets pretty much reduced to, to nothing. So that's why that row of trees has to be removed. But we are planting new trees in all the areas, all the green, other green space areas on the, throughout the property. So we are re replacing them. And also what we found is those existing trees, the root systems have uh, been damaging the pavement. They are uh, heaving the existing asphalt. So they would be, you know, all the roots and the way that the trees are existing and situated, uh, they don't help the parking lot and they're actually in the way of the existing parking lot. If we were going to resurface it, they would be the roots would be damaged and the trees would have to be removed anyway. So, got it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Other questions with regard to the Riverview parking lot? I think it's going to be some great improvement of that area. Um, you know, sort of linking all of them together now, mm -hmm. connecting it um, across the street to Franklin Plaza. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So, thank you. Other questions, comments? I'll call the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, item 12, I'll entertain a motion to accept the building department report for the month of August, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Second by Councilman Menichia. Are there questions or comments on the report? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 13, I'll entertain a motion to release the liens listed in Corporation Council's memo dated September 5th, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Second by Councilman Menachia. Are there questions on the motion or the memo? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 14, I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the tax collector and authorize the tax refunds Indicated on list dated September 5th, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Manichia. Second. And second by Councilman Waldron. Uh, questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 15, I will entertain a motion to consider business by department heads. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Second by Councilman Manichia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So to the floor, we have a room full of department heads today. Um, so our street superintendent, Tim Cody, anything this evening? Thank you. Emil, anything to add this evening? All right. Chief Borden. You're good. And Deputy Chief Tripp. Uh, Ray Drew from Public Works. Good evening. Um, just a question on the regards to the streetlights. Um, if I could get a copy of what was handed out to the city council, I can uh, draft that response and forward to the city council in regards to um, 
the inquiries made by the residents on Bradford. Thank you. Any questions? I think that's an appropriate way to handle this. I appreciate that. Yeah. And additionally, as you had mentioned, Superintendent of uh, uh, Streets and Parks, uh, Tim Cody, congratulations on your promotion, Tim. Um, um, Tim's been with the city for 27 years now, 28 years. So um, yeah, dedicated city employee, uh, uh, exceptional, exceptional uh, skills and leadership ability. So uh, I think he uh, will do well. Um, as the he leads the department into the next phase. Uh, so congratulations, Tim. Thank you, Ray. Um, Mr. Cousins, anything from engineering? I just wanted to give a quick uh, report and uh, understanding of what happened on Highland Avenue from the uh, July rainstorms that we had. So as, as we all know, uh, July had record rainfall. There was two substantial events, one on the 10th and one on the 16th. Actually, it was the 9th and the 16th that uh, did quite a bit of damage throughout the state, especially in Litchfield County. Uh, the event on the 16th had a very high intensity short duration rainfall that uh, resulted in a manhole at the intersection of Highland and Smith and uh, Maplewood surge. The manhole surged and because there was an alignment, because there was an alignment change in the piping, the manhole surged with the volume of water that comes down Highland Avenue. And when it tried to uh, when it surged to the elevation of the top of the cover, the cover was frozen, uh, stuck shut, and the water couldn't get out through the cover. The cover didn't pop because it was rusted shut, and the whole frame and the pavement around it lifted from the pressure of the water, and the water got under the pavement and went down the hill for almost 600 feet, if you can believe it two city blocks between the pavement and the gravel. And it, as you can see, it caused that ripple effect where the water went both directions. The 10% grade didn't help because the road is fairly steep there. And that resulted in the water uh, undermining the road all the way down to uh, two city blocks. At Workman, it actually went over onto the sidewalk on the north side, and it actually came out on the third driveway and it wrecked the whole sidewalk on that side as well. So unfortunately, you know, events like that, you know, we saw what happened in Norfolk on the 9th with 272, how the, you know, events like that, how, how they can damage roads. Uh, you know, the last couple of years, you know, we've had, you know, last year in July, we only had an inch of rain. And this past year we had over 10 inches of rain. So, there's no way to predict the way that these storms and the intensities and durations happen. Uh, it is unfortunate, but I just wanted to give council a understanding of what happened on that day. Uh, it was a total fluke, if you want to call it, in the way that the water uh, ended up surging in that manhole. And nothing like that, as far as I can tell from everybody in the city that I've talked to that's been here, especially Mr. Tim Cody, uh, nothing like that has ever happened on Highland Avenue before. It was not a result of defective uh, workmanship from the road reconstruction work. It had nothing to do with that. It was just an unfortunate circumstance of the way that the uh, the weather and the amount of water that comes down through those pipes happens. So uh, along with that, there was a section of Doman Drive that was damaged as well, about 150 feet. It was damaged on the uh, on the one side of the road. And there's also a small section uh, on Highland Avenue between Allen and Horse that uh, about 75 feet. So uh, I'm meeting tomorrow with our on-call uh, construction contractor at Layton Industries to discuss repaving. We're gonna have to repave about 600 feet of Highland Avenue uh, curb to curb, take out all the asphalt, check the, uh, check the gravel, make sure it's all it's all intact, add gravel if we need to, and then repave it. 
So unfortunately, then we'll get that done as soon as possible while the weather is still good and the uh, and the uh, paving is still favorable. So. Thank you, Paul. Um, okay. I, I would just like to add um, when the um, damage, the storm damage was being reported to my office, um, because the um, infrastructure in the city is so old, much of it, you know, over 50, 75, even 100 years old, I was actually quite surprised that we didn't have more damage infrastructure that was built to sustain the 100 year storms are now sustaining the 200 and 500 year yeah. storm uh, events. So I would even say um, how lucky we are that we haven't seen more damage and these were unusual circumstances, but um, something we should probably be proud of that yeah. our infrastructure is still doing what, what has happened, especially in you know neighboring states. And even like I said, in Norfolk on two twenty on 272, we did we did pretty good. Not saying that, you know, Island Avenue was good, but I'm just saying I think we did, we, we came out okay. Thank yeah. you. Other questions or comments for Mr. Cousins? Please, Councilwoman Rouet. Going over to the east side, um, you know, I, I know that we've gotten correspondence um, from residents and also you've been responsive to those um, emails regarding Country Club Road and the, you know, flooding in that on that very rural street um, uh, for over ten years, so I yeah. appreciate that you are you know trying to address it. You know, we are. We've done some camera pressure. work in the pipes, and we're still trying to understand what's happening up there. Well, I appreciate it because it's very okay. close to my neighborhood. Yes, and, um, and also I know we received an email regarding the. Um, the lines that were put in on Country Club Road, um, but I've also received positive comments, you know, from neighbors uh, regarding the um, the lines that have been uh, put on, mostly for public safety. Yes. Um, and I understand you're sort of in a position to be compliant with some of those um, rules, um, you know, to protect our children and school buses. Yes. Okay. Well, depend depending on the type of road and the volume and the traffic. And, and the amount of houses uh, Sergeant Baldus and I have been looking at uh, updating a lot of the roads and putting lines on certain roads that we feel are necessary to for safety reasons. You know, we're also looking at uh, roads that have parallel parking and maybe even, you know, adjusting the lines so that we can't have parking and the line painting, center line painting at the same time. But most roads technically, you know, should be having center lines on them. Just a lot of our rural roads we haven't in our line painting program never, you know, has we're we're evolving to try to to get us more up to speed on on those safety issues. So there's a lot of traffic that actually turns off of 183 Torringford Street. Believe me, being many of the people who walk in that neighborhood, I think um seem to be appreciative of, of what's happening. So uh, I know that we heard something from, you know, one resident on that street, but uh, having talked to a few others, you know, it's um, not a bad thing, so. And, 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 and sometimes line painting does also help to reduce speeds on, especially with, with white edge lines as well, and narrowing, narrowing those lane lines up, like we did on Prospect Street. Yeah. Narrowing those lane lines. And we, we actually, we did the same thing on Highland Avenue when we, we built it. We narrowed the road. We put the line painting white lines as well as the yellow lines, which does visually uh, help people to slow down. Yeah, well, I wish that would anyway. work on 183, which is, I know, a state road, but we have, yeah. you know, I mean, it is getting, you know, very dangerous with it you know, is. speed racing that basically goes from, you know, East Main all the way to the Winstead Road and um, at 11 o'clock at night. So, um, I know there's nothing that we can you can do, but certainly I might be talking to the chief um, regarding some additional cars up in that area. It's very dangerous. So, mm -hmm. um, well, Sergeant Baldus has always told me that anybody that that has a concern about speeding should definitely report it. Yeah, and you know he will do his best, especially if he puts up one of those speed monitoring signs 
or or whether it's patrols or what have you, but yeah, they, they do might work. They do right. welcome. Thank you, sure. Mayor. Thank you. Other questions or comments for Paul? None. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Make sure that I didn't miss any department heads. Carol, anything from the city clerk's office? All right. Uh, I guess that does it for um, department heads. I'll move into item 16. I'll entertain a motion to consider business by mayor and members. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Walton. Second. Second by Councilman Manichia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We'll start with Councilwoman Hona. I don't have anything tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Oliver, anything this evening? I see that he isn't muted, but perhaps he's not able to answer. Moving on to Councilman Waldron. Uh, nothing for me, Mayor. Thanks. Councilman Manichia. Nothing. Mayor, thanks. Councilwoman Rouette. Well, I, I think it's important to just note, you know, my first um, time serving on the city council was under Mayor Grenick um, in 1999. Um, and she certainly, you know, had a um, position of, of power and, and stance that, you know, you didn't, you didn't mess with Mary Jane. Mm -hmm. um, but I learned a lot under her leadership and, and certainly having grown up with the Schroeder family, um, all six girls that were members of the Y. Um, I'm just, you know, my heart goes out to the family and certainly, um, you know, her children. And another icon in, in the city of Torrington who um, I will always um, uh, miss and, and have had great regard and respect for is Marie Soliani, um, serving the city for 16 years. Um, she was one person, although we may sit on opposite sides, that you could come to the middle, um, come to consensus, and work together for the betterment of Torrington. And mm -hmm. I felt, Mayor, your words, you know, really were perfect, you know, in describing um, her commitment to Torrington. But she will be missed and hopefully um, long remembered. So thank you. No, well said. Um... All right, we'll move on to item 17. Uh, I will entertain a motion to open the meeting back to the public for comment on agenda items only. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Second by Councilman Minichia. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're back open to the public on agenda items only, please. And seeing and hearing nobody there being no further business before the board, I will enter a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second by Councilman Amnichia. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Good night.